behalf of uh, everything else that happened today, so we'll be five hours and 15 minutes uh, later than we're supposed to start the hearing. But uh, welcome, welcome to the Governor's Council. We'll start by uh, reading a letter from the Governor dated December 19th. The Council, I am pleased to announce the following person to the Associate Justice of the District Court Circuit and submit this nomination to the Advice of the Senate and District Council. David Serenity of Bridgewater's position of Associate Justice of the District Court. This was authorized by Chapter 206 of the Act. We'll have the rest of the close. So uh, I want to welcome you, uh, Mr. Serenity. If you want to uh, introduce a couple of people, you're welcome to do that, and then we'll move right out of here. Thank you, Dr. Brewer. Um, with me today, um, directly behind me, is my wife, Sandra Serenity. My two children, Anthony and Natalie Serenity. Um, to the other left is, is a friend of mine, a witness that uh, was not the best by the day, but he's been here for most of the day. Kevin Collins. Thanks for hanging out. And also uh, in the corner of my godfather and my aunt, uh, Dominic Ujinsi and Rosette Ujinsi. Great friend. Exactly. They're from Peabody, so be nice to you. Peabody. Yeah. Peabody. Wonderful. Yeah. 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 I want to introduce Dr. Councilor Duff and Councilor Kennedy in the room right now. Uh, we're going to start with uh, your first and only witness today because of the, the late hour. Uh, we'll hear from uh, Stuart Galano. Tell me he's going to be say all the nice things about you in 15 seconds or less. Thank you. Because of the lateness of the hour, I will be brief. I have to be 30 plus years. We were the last one to go. And we did a business together since June of 1996. I can tell you, um, as a friend, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't ask for any better of a friend in my life. Um, he stood beside me and made me for everything uh, I've ever needed. As a mayor, um, he's compassionate. Um, he's, he's well read, he has integrity, common sense, and as a lawyer, and uh, having all those uh, faculties and all of those traits, he would absolutely make a great judge. And I ask that you vote to confirm his nomination. And he would bring to the bench uh, what uh, we need on the bench, which is the guy who's carrying a bag on both sides of the table. You're not going to miss a terrible day as a partner. Pardon me? You're not going to miss a terrible day as a partner with your vote yet? Can I take a fifth on that? You can take it. Come on, man. Any questions for uh, Attorney Delano? I do. So, uh, how long have you been associated with this? June of 96. As a lawyer. Uh, I have a life. And I heard you were the money man in that. 1982 or 83 is a threat. Um, I can't, I'm going to take a fifth on that, too. Wow. <laughs> yeah. All right. Do you ever see this Corvette? Corvettes, no. One. Two hours. Thank you very much for your testimony. Appreciate you coming up today. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, anyone else here in uh, favor of the nominee? Uh, anyone against the nominee? We're going to close that portion of the hearing. We're going to hear from the nominee. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's one here. Second too late. Okay, we'll let you slide one in if you quit. I think that eight seconds. We're always concerned uh, with any judge that's affected uh, families. We're also concerned about um, the attitude of the judiciary about families. There's no question if you look at our appeals court or our superior court, uh, our judges are opposed to their custody. There's no question about it. So, I hope not the ones I look at. Okay. Um, usually, when we look at a nominee like this, we're concerned about uh, 298 and I hope you do cover that. Uh, my concern with this nominee is he has done uh, a number of cases in the appeals court uh, that touched on the issue of shared custody. Uh, I didn't like a single one of the decisions, and that the decisions are not his. So I didn't have an opportunity to speak to him. I did try to reach out to him. Uh, but I would like to know about the, uh, his view on each of the custody cases that he handled and his view of the decisions. Uh, because if his position is that he supports those decisions, uh, that were made by the appeals court, then uh, we clearly would not support it. Right. So the good news I have here is he's going to be sitting in the district court uh, and we might be doing a tour and air order, but will not be awarding custody. Uh, I, for any uh, time. Just to make my position clear, yeah. we think there are uh, two, see what's going on in the appeals court and the SJC, okay. we have too many judges that are opposed to uh, shared custody. Uh, I don't know his position, yeah. but I know he's been involved in a number of them. And, and I just like to share what he has to say. Fair enough. <coughs> if someone's the event, we can ask him. Who are, who are the most favorite? The judges? Oh, I just want to know the name. Um, and I don't have my glasses with me, but 
Um, they're listed right on the, uh, my webpage for him. Uh, there was one in 2009, one in 2010, and then the last one was uh, 2017. And then I'm the lawyer. He, he was representing uh, parties in the case. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, let's move on. Mr. Sorrenti, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Council Foyer. I would be remiss if I didn't uh, also introduce my parents, Donald and Julie Sorrenti. They joined us a little bit after I identified them. Let me introduce Dr. Devaney and Dr. Julie. Who else? Did you miss them all? Oh, I think yeah. I think oh, you're already yeah. did. Oh, did you? I'm yes. sorry. <laughs> I've, been, I've been sitting as a stand clock, so I didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell you it's my wife behind me, Sam Sorrenti, Anthony, and Natalie Sorrenti. Um, my friend Kevin Collin, my folks that I just introduced. Yeah. And then my godparent, uh, godfather, and aunt, Dominic, and uh, Rosette, and Jensen. Well, Anything else you want to tell us? <laughs> um, let me first thank you. It's an absolute pleasure and honor to be sitting here before you today. I want to thank uh, you, Council for Herrera, and each of you individually and as a council for taking the time to either speak with me or meet with me prior to today, and of course for considering me as a nominee for the Justice of the District Court. I would like also to thank uh, Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito for putting their trust and confidence in me and nominating me for the position on the District Court. I would further like to acknowledge and thank uh, Sharon Casey and Ron Povich and their staffs along with the uh, JNC and the JBC for all the time and assistance that they've given uh, myself and my application and through the office process. Uh, finally, I would like to thank my family uh, for their love and support throughout the process. And of course, uh, the witnesses uh, and that I brought here and, and their friends. In addition, I had another witness here earlier who lost her father in law last night. She stayed most of the day, but ultimately left uh, given the lateness of the hour. So I certainly would thank them and uh, thank them for not only the time and the effort they gave, given, but also <coughs> the kind words that they've, they've said. Um, I think uh, in order to know someone, you need to know a little bit about where they come from. And in that regard, I've been very fortunate. Uh, I am one of four children uh, born to my parents who have been married for over 60 years. My mother immigrated here from Belgium in 1950 uh, when she was 14 years old along with her two sisters, my two aunts, one of which I just identified in, in the hearing room. Uh, my, parents, uh, my grandparents came here to the United States a year earlier without their three daughters in order to secure housing and work for themselves so they could provide a good home for their daughters. Uh, my grandparents in, in Belgium I ran a cafe, a boxing gym, and a theater in Belgium um, before and after World War II, and really had the distinction, um, given the size of their property in Belgium, um, to have been occupied by both German and Allied forces throughout World War II. Uh, when they did move to the United States, my grandfather um, worked as a master tailor. My grandmother, who um, also worked with them, worked as a seamstress, and they ultimately owned their own shop in, in Method. Um, my paternal grandparents also immigrated to the United States, one from the region of Calabria in Italy and, and the other from Sicily uh, in the 1920s. Um, they settled in Boston and Medford where they raised their families, including my father. Um, my father's family were all laborers, hardworking people. Um, my parents met in Medford, attended the school there, and ultimately graduated there, uh, and they married after my father was uh, honorably discharged from the Air Force. They ultimately moved to Whitman where, where we grew up. Um, it is from my grandparents and later my parents that we as children learn the value of family, hard work, personal responsibility, and respect. And I'm proud to say that each of us, the four children, um, took those values forward and, and applied them to, to our own families. You know, I've been blessed with a, a great childhood and family support system my entire life. And I've had two loving, hardworking parents who disciplined us when necessary. They coached us in our sports and made sure that we wanted for nothing. Um, my mother spent really her entire life, in addition to being a full-time mother to the four of us, her entire life as a secretary at Whitman School Systems, retired after more than 42 years there. Um, my father, after being discharged from the service, also worked more than one job at a, at a time to make sure that uh, we were provided for. He worked as a draftsman and ultimately um, as a packaging engineer in the advent of computers. Uh, they instilled us in us the need for hard work in order to support ourselves and our family. Um, while neither of my parents had the benefit of college, they preached to us the importance of an education and gave each of us every opportunity to excel. I have three brothers 
this uh, actually two sisters and a brother, all of which went to school, all of which were hardworking family people, all of which are married, all of themselves short. Um, I'm going to cut this down by my, my time if you um, I give them the latest to the gal. But my personal story actually doesn't really begin um, until I was married. And my wife wanted me to make sure I said that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Uh, we have two children, Anthony who's 23, Natalie who's 20. Anthony just graduated from UVM, um, is a mechanical engineer. Natalie is a student athlete over at Bridgewater State University. Um, she's an athlete major who intends to go and um, get a graduate degree in physical therapy ultimately. Um, they have good kids, kids I'll tell you that uh, we're extremely proud of. When I met my wife, um, she was working as a dental hygienist. Uh, she later got her degree in art, while at the same time raising our children. Uh, during our marriage, she wore a number of different hats. She obviously was a student. She was an artist. She was a care provider for her, her mother when she was sick. But she held probably the most important job, and that's really to the mother of our children. <coughs> My kids are squared away, um, and all, all squared away, really because of the time that she's given our kids. Um, she was the one there that volunteered at school. She coordinated their daily activities, um, and she really provided them a lot more than just really what I would have provided them, which if it was up to me, would have been sports after sports after sports. She provided them the whole other part of that. And I would tell you, she was the one that made sure they were involved in art and cooking. And they're well-rounded kids, essentially because of what, what she provided to them. <coughs> I would tell you she's been a great partner, a great friend. The main problem. <laughs> I've read this about 20 times. <laughs> <laughs> You've never told her this before. This is right? what happened. <laughs> <laughs> this, this was all planned to be made wait good. all day. <laughs> Let's skip it and tell it to her late tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, and I'll tell you the main reason that I'm here today and I've gone as far as I have in my legal career is because she's been there for um, for me. Um, let me tell you my and I'll just be very, very brief before I wrap it up and I and I'll take whatever questions you have concerning myself and my qualifications. But my passion for the law really comes from my grandmother. Um, she lived until she was 100. She was my mother's mother, my, also my aunt's mother. She immigrated here from Belgium. Um, she came to visit with us a couple weeks out of every, I don't know, every six months or so after my grandfather died. And we would watch Perry Mason incessantly. And really, she had a passion for him. And ultimately, I think over the years, over all those episodes, I realized that that didn't seem like a bad gig to me, given the fact that he won all the spaces. He had to be up front witnesses. And it seemed to me that if this was. This was you know, civil warfare, and, and um, over the times I, I could see myself doing that, and ultimately um, I think she'd be very proud of me today. That would open up to any I questions you might have. I gotta tell you, Bob told me it was my cousin Benny, and not, and not Perry Mason. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. Councilman Kennedy. Yes. Um, I don't have a lot of questions. We had an opportunity to speak the other, the other day in the, in the hall a little bit, but uh, I do have. Um, one question with respect to your uh, wrapping up your law practice when I read your application. Uh, it basically says you can do nothing about what's left on your pocket and you're still taking a piece of the action. <laughs> uh, is that what I read there? You want me to read it? You must be a good guy to, 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 you know, to take on all the work. Um, I, I just, you know, just a few comments. You know, I like the fact that you're a defense lawyer, that you've been out in the trenches. I like the fact that you've been in private practice. Uh, you know, the comments about too many prosecutors on the parole board. Sometimes we have too many prosecutors going on the bench. And I'm not an anti prosecutor guy. Like you, I deal with them all the time. Um, and, and many of them might consider threats. But uh, you have a different perspective. You've been out there working. You know, they're hustling. You know, they're trying to uh, get a week's pay every week, pay for the lights, pay for the secretary. Yes. I've been doing it for 35 years, and it's a grind. Um, uh, and I like the fact that you have that background going on the bench because you're going to bring that perspective to the bench. And that, you know, dealt with clients.
clients that have become a good friend know that it's when you're in they're in the room, it's more than just that person that's there. It's a whole mm. family, it's children, it's uh everything else before you send them to jail, you're gonna be thinking about whether you know they're gonna lose their job, whether their family's gonna be able to support themselves and things like that. I expect based on their background. Uh, so I like that. Um the uh I also like the fact that you're gonna be able to look at lawyers like Bob Tudor and myself or possibly from court to court. Can't always make it to the Brockton District Court by nine o'clock. That's right. You know, some judges have problems with that. Why, why aren't you here? Why aren't you here at nine o'clock? We've seen that before. I don't know that in charge. Yeah. And um, so so all of that just adds up to me as, as a homeowner in terms of the nomination. It's 4 30. I'm, I'm good. I'm going to be voting Friday night. I appreciate and that. And I just want to say, your counsel is going to be I'm going to need your support. You know, I'm tired of my arm getting twisted by him. It hurts a little bit, but uh, I completely appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Thank you, sir. Um, I really enjoyed meeting you and talking to you. Um, you surprised me in a lot of ways, in real pleasant ways. I think that, um, like Councilor Kennedy said, it's late. I'm not going to ask you tons of questions because I really already asked you a ton of questions. Um, you demonstrated to me something, Transparency, uh, that I have rarely seen demonstrated as well since I've been on this council. And that is somebody who has been able to show, articulate to me how they've grown as an attorney and how 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 their their thoughts have changed and their mindset has changed. And that I think is such an important thing um, for folks that are going to be sitting on the bench that that they're able to have their minds changed, that they learn, that they're lifelong learners. And uh, as you and I discussed. Uh, different populations that will come before you, understanding some of the needs of these folks is really, really critical. Because today, you know, you're the doctor, lawyer, priest, rabbi, social worker, nurse, you're everything right. when you're sitting up on that bench. It's not Mayberry RFD anymore. Uh, it's a hard job, and um, thank you for wanting to do it. I think you're nuts, but um, no, but we do need people like like you on the bench, and I think you, um, if, if you're confirmed, I think you'll be a fine judge. I think you're going to bring a, a an even hand, uh, particularly in an area in the district that you really need. And we discussed that as well. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Thank you. Um, nice to see you again. I, I really enjoyed the four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you must have been cursing me in the traffic. <laughs> but uh, no, it was really my pleasure. Um, I have to say that um, I have a prejudice. I like people with prejudice experience. And I, I chose to be uh, something I said. <laughs> but anyway, I, I just feel um, that uh, it's my own personal opinion that if, you have, if you're a judge and you've never had an experience in the legal profession of criminal cases, you're not prepared to give the right sentence. You know, and I, I, that's my opinion. That's how I feel. And um, I'm prejudiced for a private practice. I love that because, um, you know, my own opinion, I feel like it, 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 the good people from the attorney general or the district attorney, but they get the case. And they're halfway there when the police get to their report, and they didn't choose their client. And you do. <laughs> um, reading your, you know, your background, I've had a case of, I, I couldn't believe this on the record. Greatest rapes and, and everything. I amazing um, career that you have. Uh, that it, I mean, you have qualifications to go to superior court, and, and there's no question. So why do you do this? We actually applied for superior court uh, in this application, and I'm not sure why. Um, I think this is a great fit for me. I, 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 as I talked to you about uh, when we met, I, I am very excited about this position because I. I'm kind of a high energy guy, and, and I think from the district court perspective, everything stops there. And that's community based courts, and um, I enjoy it there. I love it. I apply for the Superior Court because of my qualifications are kind of balanced between the Superior Court. And I always think of Judge Wendt, uh, who is a consul. He is a people's court, he said. Yes. And he would, if you gave it to him, he would go to any other right. court. He would go to the district court. So I, I, I saw that in you at the same time. But I have to tell you, I mean, and, and it gives nothing on my vote that my granddaughter graduated from Bridgewater <laughs> State Grade School, and uh, I'm Suffolk, uh, with four children I graduated. And uh, also, um, uh, what's the other thing? Oh, my father was born in the 
So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. My own opinion, I don't have to that. <laughs> the 19 people who were in the 17 were in the That's what I about 10 years where I did a lot of civil after I left the DA's office. Yeah. Um, at my firm at the time represented a number of um, a number of cable companies, you know, throughout Massachusetts and even into Rhode Island and um, Brooklyn, New Hampshire. Even. So we did a uh, prosecution of the cable theft work. So it wasn't collections, but it was actual litigation. So I, I did a lot of work for the 10 years between. 1990 to 2000. So I, I am fairly comfortable with the. You said you've actually read a case. You said he briefly ran two, four weeks. Yeah. Um, tell me, uh, how did you vote on the marijuana? Uh, 
then when I sat in the DA's office reading room, the first thing that was 10 years ago. So I, I share your concern. Well, you know, it was 10 years ago, people were concerned about the Roxbury, uh, you know, sort of with Lawrence, and that was a nice little suburb. So mm -hmm. now, So there, there was 
lot of depth to that case too, amongst the tribe. But um, ultimately, I think the, the jury just didn't believe the uh, star witness who was the son who was breaking news. Um, I have so many questions. I'm not going to ask them. I don't want to bust the boys, but I do want to ask you about the most recent case that we all uh, saw in the um, in the state. So much so, and you know these things I did the first time I knew. He had compartments in his car. I never knew that, where he concealed drugs. So he was shot with the drug, the traffic stop, they find him. So anyway, uh, the judge, and I heard the tape, and the judge said to him, if you were a citizen, I would send you to prison. And, uh, but if you were a citizen, he said, but he said, but you are know, not a citizen, and so I'm going to give you two years probation because of me. And you have to buy me. And so um, there were people here in the state that were shooting police officers. Because I'm not a lawyer, that's not how I do the law. Well, how would you do it? Would you say, because this is not a citizen, I'm going to do it differently than I would if I was a citizen? No, I don't think from a sensing perspective you take that into consideration. I think from a bail perspective, it may come up whether you're a citizen or not. Um, I think that judge, uh, why he did it, he had his own reasons, certainly he made them public. I think he, um, he ultimately was within his discretion. You know, I think that was. You know, the, I think the problem some people have, maybe they think judges have too much discretion. I don't know. I, I can one believe judges should have discretion because you know, I think it's you know, having well, it's a big span. It it is, is, it is. I mean, on that one, I don't think he had discretion. That's my opinion. Right. But if you take uh, Jackson the minimum sentencing, no, I think that the judge should have discretion. Right. And I've said this in the entire hearing, but we had a part of this week, we haven't had any of this administration. Yeah. 
And the other thing is, And I'll tell you, I think this is the first Dalsha uh, week that we've ever been going to. Now, what do you say? Now, now, what do you say? We say it's really Italian. What do you say for Belgium? Belgium is what you say? Belgium. Okay. okay. But when I, mean, I said that to you, I said, well, that is really interesting. You know? But uh, I, like I said, I, I had a ton of questions, which was awful to have you wait four hours. Four hours, five hours, and um, I hope that no one else will have to go through this. I hope that you can stay at one and you can do it in and out. And I thank you all for staying. And believe me, it was such a pleasure. We're glad you could fly and uh, you got through. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a Judah. Well, I'm glad you had to wait. It's all his fault. You know why? Because you're going to a court and you're going to have to wait a lot in courts, right? So, <laughs> You've done that all your life. Exactly. Right? So, you're not upset you had to wait, right? Did you have a thing you had? Bottom lunch? Wonderful. Check out the city house. It's beautiful. Well, I, I, I say this. <laughs> I say this. If somebody doesn't want to wait for a $190,000 job and a great pension, then they can go home. <laughs> so, give it to somebody else. You better take that to the Jury Wade. Yes. Can you fill out that pre-trial conference report? They ask you to check box jury or non-jury. That's right. I don't check them anymore. I put unable to make a decision at this time. Somebody said it. They're just leaving it blank. Yeah. Because you don't know who you're getting it. Exactly right. And you get one of those judges that we know about that have never in their entire career said not guilty. Can't be that many guilties out there, as far as we can tell. Ah, well, we get a we were a little bit in the seventy eighties and eighties and nineties. We were not guilty. You know, you know, you know. So, uh, you were excited about becoming a judge? Oh, yeah, absolutely. If you were going to confirm me, absolutely. I'm ready to. Well, ready to come. you have to go to a. Okay. I have too. You know what I hear when the judges get to the speech and they say, Judge, I want to thank the governor, Lieutenant Governor. I want to thank the uh, janitor in the state house. He goes through all these people he thanks. And they forget to thank the governor. The body that gave them the job, that hired them. So I'm going to go to your return. <laughs> I, you get up to give your little talk. I'm going to be listening. But a thank you to the governor's council. You'll be here. Do you think he'll forget that? Yeah. So, you remind him? He won't. Okay. In that case, I'll vote. Thank you. All right? Thank you. Can I say one thing? I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not invited to those kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. That was the least amount of questions. No, for 32 <laughs> years, for God's sake. Yeah. Uh, by the way, let me ask you one thing. Uh, what happened to the case with Jay the Lipid Surgeon? What, what happened to that case? If you don't remember, that's fine. <laughs> I, had, I remember that I did a good job. <laughs> I had a piece of that, too. They're trying to help me. You can represent him. Now, well, what happened to him later? That must have been near a I'm not sure. Did he get this fire? He did. So just to address, and I'm known as a courtesy yes. to uh, Mr. Caleb Bear because he does invest a whole lot of time, and uh, and of course that well, this must have been my kid on my behalf. Um, it's always uh, near and dear to my heart. So um, you want to address? Uh, I do. Uh, uh, just uh, just quickly. Thank you. So we know, and you know, we want to make sure that uh, mom and dad are going to get a fair shot at school and A's, because you know they set the stage. I mean, our views, you know, you think it's oh, yeah. I think I think it's a big part of it. I, as you can tell from my application, I do um, a lot of probate work, a lot of trial probate work. I do some appellate work, and I take in a 
and I think maybe three or four cases up that, that deal with issues relative to families. Um, the three that I think Mr. McCabe mentioned, the first one uh, was a removal case, and I had a real problem with that removal case because I had represented, it was I think uh, O'Brien versus Tomorrow. I represented Mr. O'Brien, who I represented for years and years and years, um, and he had a particularly difficult battle with his, um, with his wife. He had four children, an older one and three, three, um, three who were triplets, who lived in the city of Brockton. I represented him, again, after the fact. He had settled in on um, some issues and say, in an agreement. Uh, ultimately, the agreement was a very good agreement because from there on for years, many, many years, he played behind the eight ball. I took a removal. 